Good morning and Happy New Year to everybody. Welcome to all of you joining us this morning. There are some quick announcements. Uh, thank you to everyone who brought hats and scarves and gloves and mittens on the Giving Tree. It is overflowing with your generous gifts and I know that the folks at Muffley School and the Dove Shelter will greatly appreciate your gifts of warmth. This Wednesday night, January 6th, the monthly Ties A service will be available on YouTube and on our Facebook page beginning at 6.30. If you would like to take some time for prayer and reflection about this past year and maybe pray for some insight to the new year ahead, this might be a good way to get started. Uh, the weekly Zoom meetings are resuming this week, so we will have the Bible study at 2 o'clock on Wednesday, the fellowship hour at 7 o'clock on Wednesday, and discussions with Dick Virgin on Friday at 10 a.m. Also, I want to remind you that this morning we are going to be celebrating the Lord's Supper during worship, so if you haven't already done so, you might want to pause the video and get some bread and some juice and be ready to participate in that part of the service. The prophet Isaiah writes, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness. On them a light has dawned. The end of the 12 days of Christmas is marked by Epiphany, which is actually this Wednesday but we're celebrating it here in worship this morning. Epiphany is not only the day that we remember the arrival of the Magi, but we emphasize that God comes into our lives like light into darkness. As we enter into this new year, may God's light shine on us all and show us the way. Let us worship God. Thank you. 
Knowing that our God is a God of love and mercy, let us now with confidence bring our sins to God. Please join with me in prayer. Loving and merciful God, we confess that there are times when our salt has lost its flavor. Renew our commitment to be your presence in the world. We confess that there are times when we hide our light under a bushel. Give us the boldness we need to spread the light of your love even when facing challenges. In humility and hope, we ask for your help to do better, to persist in the face of challenge, to reconcile, to heal, and to build up, to find a new way. May we love both our neighbors and enemies as we seek to follow Christ in whose name we pray, amen. I must say, it's good to be, well, heading home again. Uh, I, I have so many new ideas in my head that I must explore. Oh, indeed, Melchior. We have seen much that needs considering. But, well, I'm just, just glad to be going back to my own bed. <laughs> oh, but we must stop and tell the king about our findings. I'm sure he'll be interested in what we have to say <laughs> i think you are right melchior but something about it all doesn't seem quite right i can't quite put my finger on it huh i think i need to stop and, and take a uh, uh, a little just a little nap um. Oh my, it looks as if old Balthazar has had it for the day. Yes, we might as well stop for the night. We'll go and see the king tomorrow. Good night, old friend. General. Yes, your majesty. I need you to send some troops to Bethlehem. Bethlehem? Nothing ever happens in Bethlehem. There is a child there. A child who is supposed to be special. I want you to make sure that that child is never heard from again. Do you understand? Yes, your majesty. It will be done. Oh, Gaspar, I just had the strangest dream. Who was in it? Well, it was uh, the, the king and, and well, uh, one of his generals. Yes, tell me what happened in your dream. Oh, well, the king told his general to, oh, to, oh, oh it's so terrible, oh, to find the child in Bethlehem and to, well, uh, get rid of him. Oh, but it's only a dream. Surely the king wouldn't do such a thing. Melchior. Yes? I had the exact same dream. Well, you, you, uh, same dream? Oh, 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 what could it mean? Sometimes a dream can reveal something important. Oh, but surely it's only a dream. Dreams are not to be ignored. But what should we do? Uh, oh, we, 
Well, we, we promised the king that we would return and tell him exactly where the child is. What if, oh, I mean, oh, how can we, oh, oh my, what are we to do? I think it might be wise for us to go home by a different road. Oh, you, you mean, uh, do you mean? Yes, we must avoid going anywhere that the king might find us. We must return home in secret. Oh, but that would mean, well, disobeying the king. Oh, what if I... Sometimes there are more important things in the world than kings. And this, I believe, is one of those times. Oh, my, oh, my, well, well, quick, oh, wake up, Balthazar. Oh, we must get going before we're found by the king's men. Oh, we must pack. Oh, where is that boy Samuel? <laughs> oh, my. Don't worry, Melchior. A star led us to this place, and we must believe that a dream will lead us home. It's been fun watching old Balthazar, Melchior, and Gaspar on their long journey to Bethlehem during this season of Advent and Christmas. And we could have just ended the story on Christmas Eve as they finally arrived at the manger and visited the baby Jesus. But I think a good argument could be made that today rather than Christmas Eve, is the high point of the story, and that really the final destination of the Magi is not Bethlehem, but the return to their home. So what interests me the most is the last verse of their story. It goes, Having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their home, by another way. Three or four summers ago, Jean and I went out west on our vacation in the midst of extensive flooding on the Mississippi and Missouri rivers. And I think I've mentioned before how carefully I plan vacation routes and schedules. But on that trip, I had to throw all my plans out the window. I remember being somewhere in Nebraska, needing to cross into Iowa, and constantly checking Google to see which bridges were open and which ones were closed. We certainly had to head home by another way. If the story of the Magi was a Hollywood movie, it would be a classic road movie, full of adventure and near-fatal encounters with evil kings, disrupted travel plans, and finally, of course, new insights and realizations. The story of the Magi takes us somewhere new and brings us home a changed person. Eric Wall is one of the professors of sacred music at Austin Presbyterian Seminary, and he has an interesting insight into the fifth stanza of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It goes, O come thou key of David come, and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high, and close the path to misery. Eric says this verse is a plea to God to find another way for us, a way that leads out of the path of misery and into a better world. How often in this past year have we hoped that God would close the path to misery? Misery's headlines and statistics have weighed heavy on us in 2020. Even as a vaccine seems close, more than one and a half million people have died from COVID-19 around the world. 
and funerals, those times when we gather together to comfort one another and pray for God's embrace, we've had to either have them delayed or reduced to a small group of family members. And memories of this year will include countless stories of division and violence, injustice and protest. And all of us have felt the effects of social isolation and loneliness. So we pray that God would close the path to misery and show us another way. Dick Virgin has been talking with the session on a plan to hold an event in which people would be invited to write down the things of the year 2020 they want to leave behind and then symbolically destroy them, put them in the dustbin of history. It's a good idea because in order to close the path to misery, we need to first identify those things that we'd rather not repeat. Just as the Magi had to realize that Herod was a person with whom they should stop cooperating, we have to look at the places we've been and consider which ones don't de deserve a return visit. And then we have to find another way. And finding another way isn't easy. It's always easier to follow the same way every time. Albert Einstein is widely credited with saying, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. Instead, we must be on the search for another way. The word epiphany means appearance or arrival, which is why we use it to name the day in which the Magi arrive in Bethlehem. But an epiphany is also what we call a rare moment of insight. It's that eureka moment when the metaphorical light bulb goes off in your head. The word eureka in Greek means I have found it. And legend has it that the ancient scientist Archimedes was taking a bath one day. And when he stepped in the bathtub and saw the water level rise, he suddenly understood the concept of volume and density. And so he shouted, Eureka, I have found it. And he was so eager to share his discovery, he suddenly leapt out of the tub, forgot to get dressed, and ran through the streets of the town naked. Legend has it. When the Magi follow the star and arrive in Bethlehem, they also have an epiphany, a moment of new awareness. Perhaps they even yelled, Eureka. And this moment of insight and discovery brings about a change of plans. And so they go home another way. In this new year, perhaps you're in search of something, a new beginning, a new purpose, a new practice that helps your physical, mental, or spiritual health. Perhaps you're looking for an epiphany, a sudden realization that helps you make sense of the journey we call life. Oliver Wendell Holmes once said, a mind that is stretched by a new experience can never go back to its old dimensions. Epiphanies are like that. They stretch your mind. They give you new understanding. They change your social and cultural norms. And you're left traveling down some new path. The problem is you usually don't find an epiphany. An epiphany usually comes and finds us. Our epiphanies often happen when we are not expecting them. I imagine old Archimedes spending hours at his desk searching for the formula on volume and density. He's racking his brain, looking high and low. Maybe he was even at the point of giving up when he decided, I need a bath. And right then, as he's doing something he'd probably done a hundred times, an epiphany found him. Now, I wish we could have epiphanies on demand, but we can't. 
but maybe there are things we can do to help us be more receptive to one when it appears. The first is to look and listen for God. And the many ways we can do that are as old as Archimedes. We can spend time in quiet reflection and prayer. Spend time reading the Bible, either alone or in groups. Another way is to simply be a part of a community that welcomes us just as we are, like a church. Our lives of faith are personal, but they are not meant to be private. I can't tell you how many epiphanies I've had through simple conversations with ordinary people. And being in a community and sharing our lives with each other is one way an epiphany might find you. And here's one more way. Do something different. Allow yourself to experience some discomfort, some change. Allow yourself to hear the voices of those with whom you disagree, the voices of those not in your immediate circle of friends, not of the same theological or political leaning, and have a conversation. And when you have that conversation, don't allow your mind to immediately start creating arguments intended to show the other person how wrong they are. Instead, listen for something new, for some ray of light to crack open your usual way of seeing things. As we look back at this past year, there's probably a long list of things that each one of us would like to leave behind. But it's also been a year in which we've been forced to do things differently and often in a way that's uncomfortable for us. Perhaps along with the things we'd rather forget, there are some epiphanies that have been trying to get us to pay attention. Scripture tells us the Magi went home by another way. So let each one of us try another way this week and this year. Another way to demonstrate our love of neighbor or love of self. Another way to have conversations with difficult people. Another way to live out a life of reconciliation and justice. Open yourself up to some light bulb moment that God might be planning for you this year. And then go on an adventure down this new path to see where it leads. All of us will be richer for the experience. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join with me in prayer. God of new beginnings, like the birth of Christ at Christmas, like the arrival of the wise men at the manger, help us to embrace the wonder of beginning something new in our lives. As you opened up the minds of the Magi to seek a new way home, open our hearts and minds to a new way of being your people. Give us the courage and the energy to meet the challenges that face our church, our community, and especially the problems of this past year. Let us become a safe place for those who feel threatened or for those who have been rejected. Let us become a place of solace for those who have lost hope, for those who have lost loved ones due to COVID or gun violence or cancer or anything else. Give us the strength to walk with those whose paths have been blocked or shut down those who can no longer find a way forward on their own. May we become a voice for the voiceless, for the ones who have been cut off and silenced. Indeed, lead us in our work as your church for justice and for kindness and for inclusion. We pray this together in the name of the one who comes as a light into our dark and weary world, Jesus the Christ, amen.
This meal gives us a glimpse of how God intends the whole world to be, gathered together, sharing with one another, filled with love and grace. God invites each one of us, no matter who we are, to be joined together so that we might spread God's message of kindness, justice, and inclusion. Please join with me in saying the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right for us to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. O Lord our God, we give you thanks for your love which is so deep and wide. We thank you for the beauty of your creation and the beauty we see in each person. Draw us into your heart and help us to be aware of your presence today and every day, no matter where we are on our life's journey. Most of all, we thank you for your extravagant love which comes to us in the person of Jesus. As we share this meal, remind us of the ways in which he shared himself with others, the way he cared for the sick, the way he forgave sinners and made friends with outcasts and the ignored. May this meal bring us closer to him and to all your children. Gracious God, breathe your spirit upon us. Fill us completely so that we might become your bold and faithful disciples. And now hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this remembering me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, and shed for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink it, do so, remembering me. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. So we encourage you now, wherever you are, to join together in this meal. We'll take a moment to quietly pause for prayer and reflection.
through the generosity of this holy meal, O God, may your love spill out into the whole world. Give us the courage to speak your truth, seek your justice, and live out your love. Amen.